Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Then you start from right here. My name is Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? No, oh, my wife says Yusuf. Okay, we got up to that. Now, we're going to talk about love. Love is what? What is love in Islam? And that's our subject today. We first broke down the word Islam to understand what it is. Islam from five words. Remember what are the five words? Surrender. Submission. Obedience. What? Sincerity. And then? Islam is peace. Yeah, okay, we got all that. Now let's talk about this word. What is, what is that all about? Is there really love in Islam? What kind of love are Muslims talking about? Well, somebody might say, well, they love to be terrorists. They love to go out and blow up stuff. They love to be hijackers. They love to, you know, because this is the kind of media attention that we're getting. But in reality, those of you who know Muslims, you've been around Muslims, some of you raised as Muslims, you already know that there's some beautiful things in Islam. Nobody ever really verbalizes this. They never bring it out. They don't talk about it. For what reason, I guess, Allah knows best. But I found one of the names of Almighty God in the Quran that highly impressed me. As much talk as we have in the Old Testament about God and who He is and His wrath and His anger. It's all over the Old Testament, by the way. It's very serious stuff. It's not to be taken lightly. And as much as we hear people saying the New Testament is talking about love, but actually you read it, especially you go to the Kone Greek, you didn't find that. But what you do find, very clear, <laughs> in the Quran, in the last Jews, in the 30th part of it, it's in Surah Al-Baruj, I think it's like chapter 85. <laughs> and when you read it, it's the very, toward the very end of it. It says that Allah is Al-Wadud. Did you know that? How many of you knew that? Allah is al -Wadud. You knew that? It says it. And you read that and you go, okay, so whatever. No, no, no. Go back and study this a little bit. This is not saying Allah is love. As in a noun. It's saying that He is the loving as a continuation, as always, eternally, from the beginning, even before, always was Allah. Even after, always Allah, Allah is eternal in everything and in his status of being al wadud he is the all-loving. So for sure, we have an amazing statement here that we didn't find anywhere else in any other religion. The ongoing love. Now this ties in immediately with the compassion that we find in Al-Rahman. It ties in immediately with what we know about Allah being Al-Latif. And that Allah is the gentle, the subtle. Allah is the one who is all-merciful, all-gracious. And He's the all-forgiving. And you've noticed that these are the imperative of these, the superlative, beyond, <coughs> beyond, beyond. When we say Allah is greater, have you heard this one? People say Allah Akbar, Allah is greater. And they think, oh, well, there must be another superlative after it, which must be the greatest. But actually, Allah is the greatest, but because it is ongoing, we say greater when we try to translate Allahu Akbar. I don't want to get into too much of this, but Akbar comes from Kabara, Kibr, which is pride or arrogance, will never work in front of Almighty God because that's his biggest characteristic. <laughs> He's bigger than anything else. So who are you to have this arrogance? And, oh, 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 who do you think you are? He created you. Don't do that in front of your Lord. This is a problem. So, we'll come back to this love. If you read some of the teachings of Muhammad, the translations to English, you find that he actually did speak about this quite a bit. But more than talking about it, he's demonstrating it. Let me ask you, what do you love? What do you really love? Oh, well, you know, uh, I love golf. I love video games. No, no, what do you really love? Well, you know, I love my position. I got a good job. I love my education, man. I got a PhD. You know, okay, good for me. Some people get hung up on their degrees and they want to get lots of degrees. Maybe some of you are interested in that. You have bachelor's, <coughs> master's, you got your bachelor's of arts, you got bachelor's of science, you got 
your PhD. Man, you just love these degrees. By the way, if you want to save some money and do it really quick, go to the pharmacy and buy a thermometer. It's loaded with degrees. Okay? Put it in your pocket. Anybody want to know? Ah, I got degrees. Okay, put it down. Shut up. But <laughs> we, we have many things that we love in this life. Somebody loves his new car. You ever get a brand new car? You'd be like, oh man, smell this car. Oh. And when you park in a parking lot, you park it this way so nobody can get close and scratch it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Or park it way out and then walk a long way. It's raining, you know. He's walking. I don't want my car to get wet. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But what do you love? And the evidence of what you love really is in what you do every day. The evidence of what you love is known should be known to you. Everybody else knows it because of what you do. At my house, everybody knows Daddy loves the internet. You never get off the computer. Is that right, Adam? Yes. This is a fact. That's how it is. I never get off of it. So they say, you must love it. I say, I don't love it. Then why you spend all your time with it? Well, I have to. Uh -huh. You don't really have to, but you do it. Well, you know, I have websites, I have email, I have... No, 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 no. Never mind all that. You love it. Or you wouldn't do it. So what you find yourself doing is really what you love. Even if you complain about it all the time, if you really didn't like it, you wouldn't do it. It's as simple as that. Some people love complaining. Huh? Uh, you know what I'm saying? How many of you got a mother-in-law? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so, what you do is evidence really of what you love. This is why in Islam, there are physical things that are required so that somebody would not be able to get away by saying, no, I really love Allah. Some people say that. Some people have their gods and they say, you know, I have God in my heart. He kind of makes you wonder, you want to take him down to the doctor, get an operation, get him out of there quick. But, you know, they say, I have God in my heart, or I love God, I have God in my mind, so I don't need to do all this stuff like praying and fasting. What's all that about, you know? I have to wear certain kind of clothes and... I, not, I don't have to do that. I love God. You don't know. It's between me and Him. I mean, we got something special going on, big time, and so you don't know, you know. So, I'm saying it, the mouth is very clear. Oh my God, articulating it. Excellent. But there's no demonstration for this whatsoever. <coughs> Many marriages fall apart for this reason. The man tells the wife, I love you. I, I love you. I really love you. So, well, why don't you come home and stop telling me on the telephone? No, no, I, I really care. Well, you know, I didn't see you for three days. Why don't you come home? Yeah, I'm working on it, but uh, don't forget, I love you by click. If he really loves her, how come he doesn't come home? What's the problem? What you do with your time by choice. Now sometimes you don't have choices, but when you have a choice, that's what you really love. So, let us consider this. Here's a boy, comes to his mother. He says, Mom, I love you. Oh, inshallah. My son, he loves me. Oh, it's lovely. Do you mind to go into the kitchen and wash the dishes? You know, I have my legs are swelling up bad and I've, I've got the diabetes, you know, with, you know, you get you with blood sugar, you know, diabetes. So I can't get up and go in there. You go wash the dishes. No, I don't want to do that. No, but you said you love me. No, not that way. A special way. Look what I brought you. Oh, candy. Chocolates. Son, I got diabetes. I can't eat that. <laughs> I know, but I'll eat it for you. It's so good. And I love you. Say, what? Or he comes in the next day. Mom, I love you. Oh, my son, he loves me. Will you please go outside, you know, take care of the grass and the flowers and everything for me? Because my asthma, you know, is bothering me so bad. I can't go out there with the, you know, stuff in the air. No, I don't want to do that. What? No, I love you and I have something for you. Surprise! Flowers! Flowers, I have asthma, get it away from me. Yeah, I know, but uh, I love them. 
So this boy loves his mother or loves himself? Think about it. He's doing something, but who's he doing it for? Himself. But he's telling her, I love you. If you really love, then you do what the person wants you to do. You make the person happy by doing what they're asking you to do. For the Muslim, it's clear. Chapter 3, verse 19 of the Quran in Al Iman. <laughs> Allah says clearly here to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what to say to these people who say, I love Allah, I love Allah. Okay, tell them, if you really love Allah, follow me. Then Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins. Because he's the forgiver, the merciful. So it means you are saying it but guess what? It's not reciprocal. It's not coming back to you from Allah. This is something you're saying. This is your mouth talking, but your body is not cashing the check. That's the problem. You're saying it. Go ahead. Oh, I believe in God. Really? We don't see anything from you. But I love God. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. Positive. Positive. No doubt. What are you doing about it? So the love in Islam is one that obviously is in your heart, no doubt, in your mind, no doubt, but it's also in your limbs, and it's demonstrated through your life. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he told us that the, about the body, it has 360 joints, and each one of these joints is requiring of you an act, an act of charity, of sadaqah, every day. Now, when I was a Boy Scout leader, all we needed was one good deed a day. That's all we needed. We were telling kids, one good deed for today. What was your good deed? Oh, let's see. Does turning your paper in on time at, work, at school count as a good deed? No good deed. Help a little old lady across the street, you know, carry somebody's bags. No good deed. You need 360 every day to fulfill the obligation of your body alone in Islam. <sighs> ah, but, read the rest of it. <laughs> this is some good news. But, even, even removing a piece of trash from the way of the believers, you know, clearing the way, is an act of charity. So that's nice. And, a smile in the face of your brothers is an act of charity. How many can we count to? Yeah, I almost made it. Maybe after the speech tonight I'll have mine. There we go. So a smile in the face of your brother is an act of charity. Now, let's come back to this and look at another way of looking at this subject of real love. And not the kind you just, you know, make a little valentine and send it on the 14th of February, you know. I love you, and you're using just the three letters. I, and then a heart, and a oo, like this. <laughs> Isn't that cute? But the real love, when the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he said, he didn't say love, but look what he said and think about it. You're not a believer. If you fill your stomach and go to bed at night and your neighbor's stomach remains empty. Whoa. I love my food, you know. I do. I didn't get this big by accident. <laughs> but you're telling me, no, I can't fill my stomach up and go to sleep. <sighs> but my neighbor's laying there hungry because it cancels my Islam? Yeah? Why? Remember what we said? Sincerity. Sincerity. And in Islam, it's not just what you do for your Lord. It's what you do for the people because Islam is also saying this. Whoever doesn't thank the people, he doesn't thank Allah. This is clear. It's hadith, the Rasul Sassim. And whoever doesn't have a good with the people, his rapport with the people is no good, then how could his rapport with Allah be any good? Immediately after your relationship with Almighty Allah and His Prophet is your relationship with the people. And you'll be asked. Now there is a priority in Islam. But it's no stranger to those who are followers of the monotheistic faith before. If you look to the 
book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, if you look to the New Testament, you'll find support for what I'm going to tell you. First of all, and foremost of all, is that the worship in the real love is only for God alone, without any partners. One God, and all worship is for Him. Along the way, some people invented something called Trinity. It came from the Roman religion called Catholic, and was introduced to Christianity in 325 A.D. Since that time, there have been a lot of fables and stories made up about it, but real researchers will come to find out that, that what I just said is a fact. That's how it comes. Prior to that, though, they didn't have this idea. So what happened to the idea of one? And do we still see that? Well, actually, there is no trinity mentioned anywhere in the Old Testament. You don't find anything there. And in the New Testament, again, you don't find this word. But what you do find is a clear teaching in Old Testament. The Lord your God is one Lord. And this is the only one you can serve. Serve. Now what do you mean by serve? Who do you serve? A master. And who does that make you? A servant. So, aha. Uh -huh. Familiar terms here all of a sudden. Start thinking about that relationship in Islam between me, the slave, and God, the master. The big difference here, though, is there's always a choice. A person always has a choice. You can choose to believe or not. Because Allah, He doesn't force people to believe. One of the most misquoted, misunderstood probably, of the quick phrases people throw out of the Quran is this one. La ikraha fiddin. This is not the whole verse, it's just a part of a verse. But they use that to like justify everything they do. La ikra hafidin. This is not the verse. The verse, La ikra hafidin katta bayan arushtul minulai. And then even then it continues. But suffice that this is telling you there is no compulsion in the deen or the way of Islam. Allah doesn't force you. It's your choice. You want to do it? Welcome. You don't want to do it? Watch and learn. That's how it goes. You want your God. You want to be close to Him. You want to please Him. You want to be with Him in the next life. Welcome. Come on. Let's go. You don't want it? No push. There's no forcing anybody. The decision is yours. Anytime you want to do it, good. Anytime you want to leave it, too bad. But you can leave just like that. And it happens. I've seen it myself. People who were not Muslim, when they came in and went out, they were Muslim. Other people, I've seen them, they were in a Muslim family, but all of a sudden one day, for whatever reason, they decided, eh, I don't need this. Aren't they not? But it's not about my relationship with them, is it? It's about their choice of their relationship with Him. If you want that relationship, it's there. You want to talk about love? Real love should be demonstrable. Should be able to demonstrate it, not just verbalize it. You love your mother? Of course. This is one of the things the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and Last Testament, Quran, insist on your mother, your mother, your mother. You find it over and over. Hadith even has it exactly that way. Your mother, your mother, your mother, then your father. But in any case, your parents are very important. And when your mother's old, and she's in a wheelchair, she can't hear anymore. What? What? Or in a case like my father, you come in the room. He's living with us. I walk in the room. A sonny, you came to see me. I was just here five minutes ago. You know? And I passed through the room again. Oh, you came to see me. They have what they call Alzheimer's. The brain is going, you know, they can't help it. Now, well, how will your patients be now? Like, oh, shut up. If you do this, it's against the Bible. It's against the Quran. And it means you didn't really demonstrate real love. Because it's easy to love somebody's giving you something. A child loves a mother, why? Well, give them, that's where the food's coming from. Yeah. And this is the one who's putting up with me. I scream and here comes somebody to take care of me. You know, and even after I fill up, <laughs> when I eliminate, I got somebody to clean up. <laughs> and who is that? The mother. 
But now the mother's old and she's in a wheelchair. She needs you. How will you treat her? In my country, we have many buildings with fancy names on them. Sunshine Retirement Home. Doesn't that sound nice? Huh? Blissful Acres. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's an old dungeon, really. But it sounds nice and you say, well, they don't know anyway. I've heard them say it. They said they don't know. It doesn't matter. Just leave them in there. Let them cry. Let them holler. People working in those places say, eh, they don't know. So who cares? We feed them. They're alive. And they're going to die anyway. When my father got really, really bad, he'd broken both of his hips. And uh, once in the bathtub and the other one just, we don't, we're not even sure. But he's very fragile when he got into his 80s. And so we had to take him to this, what they call retirement center, for so many days because they wanted to make sure that we were treating him right. You know, what we did, we stayed around the clock. They said, you can go home. We said, no, 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 it's my father. We don't go home. We stay here with him. Around the clock, 24 hours a day, we watch everything they bring, what they happen, they have to take care of. And finally, one nurse told my wife, why are you guys doing this? Why don't you just let him stay here? The government will pay for it. And he'll get pneumonia and he'll die. And it'll be over. You won't have any problem. My wife, like me, from Texas, converted to Islam. She looked at me like, what? How could you say this? Are you crazy? That's my husband's father. I said, yeah, but he doesn't know anything anymore. So what difference does it make? She said, we know. And he knows. Are you crazy? <coughs> this is Ajar for us. They said, what? She said, reward. We get a reward from Allah. Take care of her. They said, whatever. But this is their attitude. Is this love? Is it? You love your money. You love your time. So when somebody's incapacitated, hey, pull the plug. Whoa. That's kind of scary. I have a very dear friend who lives in Riyadh. His son was in an automobile accident some years ago. And he's been on life support ever since, in a coma. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't even think of saying something like this in his presence. You know, <laughs> you might be in big you may, <laughs> You may have to get out of Riyadh and never come back. If you say something like this, because this, they don't mind. Nobody's complaining. What he did, now this is a businessman, and he's well established, very well established over there. He could hire a million people easily. But no, he took his whole business, his house, everything, he has a palace, but no. He took the room next to his son's room, and he's got his business in there. You want to do business, you make appointments, you come, and any time, at any moment, he can jump up and go and see how his son is doing. If he just feel like, I want to just go be with my son, read some Quran for him, he can do it right away. And this is normal for them. His wife, the same way, that's our son, we don't mind. If Allah bring him back, oh great, if he doesn't, okay, this is our lot in life. So this brings <laughs> us back to that last word again, doesn't it? That last word, peace. Would you be in peace with this situation? Because I'm amazed when I see Muslims respond to the difficulties and tragedies. They say, Alhamdulillah, Kulihal. It's all from Allah. So the praise is to Allah. Somebody <laughs> dies, they don't panic. Oh, oh, you died. Oh, 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 where's God when I need him? No. The proper perspective should be for a human being. It's logical. We all consider ourselves to be logical. But we're probably the most illogical thing walking on the earth. Because if you have a brain and you can think as much as human beings think. Animals don't think like we think. We think things through. I mean, look, look how long we've sat here and listened to me talk. No animals would sit and listen to a dog bark that long. They'd be like, shut up. But we're thinking, you know, this is a stimulus here. So, the thinking person, why don't we consider this to be number one most important subject? Death. Being born, that wasn't up to us. 
Nobody in this room said, you know what, I think I'll be born today. <laughs> no, we showed up one day. We don't even remember about that. Your mom can tell you all about it. But I don't know anything about it. But now I find myself in this life. Why am I not concerned with the inevitable? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulu nafsan Every single soul shall taste death. Will anybody escape that? Huh? For us, we only know one so far who has escaped this, but eventually he'll die too. That's Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. When he comes back and leads the victorious, then he will still die. Oh, we don't want to forget Iblis, <laughs> the enemy of all the humans. He's not human, but he's our enemy. He also will die eventually. So everybody's going to die, except Allah. Allah is Al-Hayy. He will never die. He's continually alive, always and forever. But everything he created will come and go, including us. So why haven't we made this a priority? And now we'll come to the biggest subject of love of all. It's called habadunya. Hab, love, desire for what? Adunya. Now, love, you understood that, is more like, in this case, more like a lust. More so than an affection. It's a lust, like, I gotta have it. <clears throat> what is dunya? This is from a word in Arabic, something very low and debased. Something very, very low and disgusting. That's dunya in Arabic. But the reference means the worldly life that we live in. This is called hayat dunya The life of this world, this low place that we live in. And who is having this hub dunya love for this world, is not at the same time having love for the one who created it. So basically we find out in true love, it's something more than just, you know, I love my job, I love my position, I love my wife, I love my kids. No, it's something even bigger. It's worship. Worship we find very clear and we understand that's an expression of real deep love is what you worship. And what you worship is what you do. The evidence is there. Think about it. And I'll leave you with what my wife says. She actually made me get some bumper stickers and some pens that we used to give out. And it said right on it, Worship the Creator, not His creations. The real love? For what? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that in the last days things will reverse. He said, now Allah is making you victorious. You're few in number and your enemies fear you. In the last days it will be the other way. Your enemies won't fear you, you'll fear them. And he even mentioned that they would be calling to come to the Muslims, like you call people to a meal, to a feast. Come on, everybody, come on over. <laughs> We're having Muslim for lunch. He said it. It would happen. And they said, will it be because we're so few in number? He said, no. Nah, no. You will be everywhere on the earth like scum, you know, on a flood. They said, well, then what will be our condition? He said, oh, because of wahan, is the Arabic word. And even they didn't know for sure. What do you mean, wahan? What's wahan? He said, it is habadunya, love of the material world and the fear of death. And with regard to that, Allah tells us about this, about the death and what kind of condition to be in. So we'll end with what Allah says, Ya yuladina amandu attaqallah haqatukatihi wa la tamutuna illa Oh, you who believe, have full taqwa. We're going to talk about a big word, taqwa. Full honor, respect, fear of your almighty creator. It's his right that you have taqwa for him. And don't die except in a state 
of Aslama. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace with Him. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Hu Aladi Jalan Muslimin, Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.